Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I've been talking a lot recently about flint and steel fire lighting. You've seen some of my recent videos um, and it's something I'm really getting back into. And as part of it, I've been using these. Now you've seen these before, these are the sulphur matches that came with the kit I bought recently. Um, and they're really, really useful. I mean, you know, they're, they're kind of a bit of a quirk, a bit of a, a, bit of a fun thing to use. Um, but I like having them in my kit. Um, now the ones that came with it were really, really nice and well made. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to try and make my own. Um, so what I've got here, and I'll show you a little selection. These are just some little chopped up coffee stirrers um, that I pinched from a local coffee shop. Um, and I have got, I'll show you this closer in a second, but essentially I've made a little impromptu melting pot um, to melt down the sulphur, which is here. Um, this cost me about five pounds. Um, it is, uh, what is it? Da -da 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 -da. It is 99.9% uh, sulfur powder it's kind of like scientific grade um, you know from a reputable supplier um, and that will last me a very very long time um, now I've sort of looked around online to sort of work out how to do this and it really is as simple as melting down some sulfur um, and dipping in your little sticks now there's a few little precautionary things to say before we start i'm sorry about all the noise overhead guys um, so before we start um, sulfur is obviously a chemical um, it has a very low ignition point it's about 190 degrees which means it can sort of flash very easily um, which is why i'm using this little contraption with a little tea light candle in it just to keep that sort of temperature quite low um, i was going to use one of my camping stoves the gas burner um, but i figured that's probably a bit too much heat um, and also, if you are melting sulphur, you need to do it in a nice ventilated area, like my workshop, I've got the door fully open. Um, you know, this sort of, this amount of sulphur um, and the fumes that come off of it are not going to be particularly bad for you in a, in a little sort of small scale, short term environment like this. Um, you know, it can lead to irritation to the eyes, the throat, the lungs, um, if you're not in good ventilation or if you're doing loads and loads of it. For me, I'm going to do a very small batch. I've got good ventilation. I'm going to try and not kind of put my head directly over the top so I'm breathing in the fumes directly. Um, and hopefully that should be fine. So I'm going to move the camera just a little bit closer in. I'll show you a little bit about this setup and we'll make a start on getting these uh, sulfur matches made. Right then guys, so here is my little setup. I've got a drinks can that I've sort of butterflied open. I've got a little block of wood in there just to raise the height of the tea light candle so it's quite close to the top. Um, I'm using the underside of the drinks can here because it's got a nice kind of shallow depression in it. So it holds uh, almost like a little small bowl, holds the sulfur really well. This has been melting for probably 10 minutes now. Um, because there's a, obviously not a lot of heat coming out of this candle, it takes a little while, um, but it's got there in the end. Um, and what I've got, as I say, are these little coffee stirrers. Um, they're a nice kind of fairly soft, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, they're quite a, a lightweight wood, so they burn reasonably well. Um, and I've seen a lot of people sort of, yeah, will dip these two or three times and build up an amount of uh, sulfur on the heads. I don't really think you need it, um, and, that, and that's the that's the sort of the, the basis I'm doing this on. Is that you know I've got a nice amount of liquid in here. I'm just gonna dip this in, take it straight out. You can see the amount that I've got on here. It's not a lot at all. And just off camera here, I've got a piece of polystyrene, and I'm just gonna wedge that in there, just so that I've got somewhere to leave it to cool. Um, and basically, it's rinse and repeat so what I think I'll do I'm going to do a load of these um, I'll skip through the footage uh, so you can you know, I'm not boring you too much and I'll come back when we have got a few of these made
So there we go guys, a nice smallish batch of these, I mean there's plenty more left in there uh, to do more and the benefit of this is that as this cools down this will solidify in the tin so I can put this tin aside when it's, when it's uh, solid, um, leave it for however long I want, reheat it and it will melt back down and all I need to do is add a bit more in there just to top up the levels. Right then guys, well it really is as simple as that, it's a great little rainy day project, which it is today, um, and what I wanted to show you is a couple of things. So this is the original one that came with the kit, these are kind of, as I say, the, the sort of professionally made ones, um, and this one is the one I've just made. So, you know, there's not a huge amount of difference, this one obviously looks a lot tidier, it's also got a lot less sulphur on it. Um, you know, the, one of the things I should have mentioned earlier is it's quite important that you put a point on the end of your matchstick, whatever you're using. Um, it just helps the flame to take. It's a smaller surface area for the wood to, uh, to combust on. And as I say, these have got a really, really low flash point, low ignition point, about 190 odd degrees. Um, you know, which compared to most things, you know, you wouldn't be able to get this piece of wood to burn on its own by that. Um, and what I think I'll do, I'll give you a quick demo. Um, so I've got my flint and steel and some char cloth here. Let me just find a suitable edge. And I will show you first the, uh, the sort of the professional one. He says, well, he can't get a spark. Let's try that again. There we go. Right, bear with me. So, where are we? There we go. So that one's lit pretty smoothly and easily. And then if I grab another piece, Try and do the same again. So here is the one I made earlier. Blue Peter, eat your heart out. And well, I'm trying to burn myself. There we have it. So they've both taken at roughly the same kind of speed. Not really any significant difference, I don't think. You can see how that point has helped establish the flame. And I always find it's best to hold these sort of upside down a little bit, um, just to let that flame from the sulfur take onto the wood, and then you've got a nice established flame. Let me just put that out and grind out that bit I've dropped on the floor so I don't set fire to my workshop. So as I say guys, it really is as simple as that. You know, they're not 100% necessary, but they're a nice fun little thing to use as part of my kit. Um, you know, flint and steel, I'll always prefer ideally to use a tinder bundle on a piece of char cloth. But if conditions are bad, if it's wet like it is out today, you know, you can use this in lieu of a normal match, just so you can have a different way of lighting your fires. Um, and you know, how many of these do you need in your kit? Well, how many matches do you need to light a fire? In an ideal world, I think all of us would like to be able to say we can all make a one match fire. Um, generally, I think I normally can. However, you know, I've always got a few in my kit just, just on the off chance that, you know, I get a, a gust of wind at the wrong time or a raindrop falls in it or something like that. So I hope it was useful, guys. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers, guys.